Alright, welcome back for part two of this. Uh, my other video was getting way too long, so I was only eh, about halfway there. So, um, should be starting at 37. If you guys are keep looking right here, this is going to give me the number that I'm, looking, I'm working on. So, 37 of 70. I believe there's only like 65 questions, but I kept a couple extras. Just in case there's some extra stuff that I actually want to work on towards the end. Um, just empty slides. So, anyway. All right. So, continuing with what we're doing. So, we're going to look at this. And so, I, I need to talk about a couple of things here. So, I know my slope is 3. And my B value, which is my y-intercept that we had from earlier, is 1. So, I know it's going to be always y equals mx plus b. My slope is going to be the rise over the run. So, it... it I don't want to go back over this again since I did it a couple problems ago in the previous video. So if you want to go back and learn uh, all the steps on this one right here, uh, go ahead, check that one. I go into it in detail. Uh, at this point right now, I'm just continuing. So hopefully everyone's going through this item by item. So I've already gone over it once. So now we're just putting the numbers in to where they need to go. All right, so that means that B is my y-intercept right here. So I'm going to start this at 1. I know it's an inequality, but I'm going to just graph it as is. So it's going to be a positive 1. So positive 1. Okay, so I have positive 1 there. And then I have uh, my slope is going to be rise over 1. So it's going to be 3 over 1 is my rise and my run. Okay, so I have my positive one there and my, there we go, rise over run. So now uh, it's going to go up three and right one. So it's going to go one, two, three, right one. I have here one, two, three, right one. You can do backwards if it's going down one, two, three, left one. One, two, three, left one. So you could just keep going on this. So. Now, I like the inequality thing because it actually tells me, all right, so who's the young, hungry alligator? So I don't know if you guys actually remember that. Alligator always eats the bigger number. So put a little teeth right here, Our alligators. All right, so that's my alligator. My alligator is going to take a bite of the Y. So the Y is going to be greater than. So that means that I'm going to look at the Y axis. So here's my X axis. Here's my Y axis. And so I'm going to look to see. So y is greater. So that means that I want the numbers that are going to be greater than or equal to. Now, the equal to is going to give me the solid line like I have right here. If it was not equal to, that would give me a dotted line. So this is going to be a nice solid line through here. If it didn't have the line on the bottom, it would be a dotted line. So y is greater than. So just look at the numbers on the y. Okay. So... Along the Y, I have all these right here. So the numbers, the bigger numbers on the Y. Okay, Y is greater than. So that means that I want everything that it is above that line. So I want everything above that line. So right here, if Y is greater than, that means I'm going to have this number. I'm going to have, oh, I don't like that color. That don't work very well. Oh, it's too pink. Anyway, so that means I want this, 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 this. All those are on my Y and they're all greater than. That means that everything above this line is going to be part of the shading. Whenever I do an inequality, it's not always going to be exactly. It's going to be, you know what, a range. So all numbers that are above that is going to be true. Well, let's see. I'm going to actually test to see if this works. Okay. So I'm going to pick an, a Y and an X. So I'm going to pick the point right here. Oh, crap. Point right there. So it's going to be, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4. That point right there is going to be 4, or 0, 4. That's that point right there. So that's that point, 0, 4. So it's zero left and right and four. So that means that my X value is zero, the Y value is four. So I'm gonna plug that in to see what I get. So my Y is four, 
I'm going to put in my symbols. Alligator, and this 3 times my x value, which is 0, plus 1. Let's do the math. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1. So if I do the math right here, that says that 4 is greater than or equal to 1. Is that true? Hey, yes, it is. The alligator is going to eat the 4. That's what it's going for. That means that all this right here is going to be correct for my shading right here. So now I want to double check something real quick. So work with me because I think I screwed up earlier. My one graph that I was mentioning. Yes, I've been here for a while. Oh my goodness. I did. I messed up. So I made a boo-boo right here. So I don't want to go back and edit the video because it's over an hour long. Anyway. All right. So this right here. So this is back on 26. I made a mistake. I made a very big mistake because I feel really bad because bad teaching. Sorry. Okay, so it, the inter y intercept is positive three. I went down three for some reason. All right, so let's look. One, two, three. So it's a positive three, and my rise again was my two over one. So it's going to be up two and right one. One, two, right one. Up two, right one. So my line. something like this okay something like this so this is question number 26 I made a mistake I am so sorry so please I know everyone's watching all the videos so yes I did make a mistake I'm sorry okay anyway so it should be like that so I made a mistake earlier so the block line is correct there we go okay so now this one is going to have uh, a lot less detail because I was explaining it on the previous one. Now we're actually going to start and do the exact same thing. So now I have 2x plus y is less than 3. I need to make it into y equals. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Subtract 2x from both sides. So now it's y is going to be less than negative 2x plus 3. It's plus 3 because that's a positive 3 right there. Okay, so now, let's see. Alligator is not going to eat the y this time. It's not going to eat the y. So my slope is negative 2, which is going to be, it's going to go down 2 over 1. And my y-intercept, the b value, is positive 3. So now for this right here, I'm going to go ahead and... So at positive 3 is where I'm going to start on my y-axis. Here's my x. Positive 3, 1, 2, 3, right there. And then my slope is a negative, so that means it's going to go down this time. All my other ones have been positive. This one's going to go down 2, right 1. Down 2, right 1. Down 2, right 1. So this is the example of a negative slope. Negative slopes go down. There we go. Right there. So that's my line. But now on this one right here, I'm looking to see this one right here. I don't have an equal sign here. I don't. So that means since there is not an equal sign, that is what my line is supposed to look like. And I'm going to go ahead and make it a dotted line. So I started with that. So let's make it a dotted line. So do a little bit of fancy erasing here. There we go. So now I have a dotted line. I have a dotted line right there. So now I need to pick to see what's going to be greater than. So the alligator is going to eat the greater. So that means on this one, we're again looking at the y-axis here. We look at the y-axis. So the y is going to be, so it's going to not. So if I'm looking at the y-axis only, that means the y is less than. So I'm just going to look at the y-axis. And so I'm going to pick my other color. Uh, let's try that pink again. So that means that everything over here is going to be part of this and I'm going to test it again so let's test it by picking a point so if I did this correctly I could pick a point anywhere I'm going to pick this point because it's lovely I love zero zero 
It makes so much sense. So that one is zero, zero. It fits into my category of what is shaded. Let's plug in zero, zero. So zero less than negative two times zero plus three. Okay, I plug in the y, I plug in the x, and then I get negative two times zero is zero, so zero less than zero plus three, so zero is less than three. Hey, look, that's true. My shading is correct. <sighs> Write the products. So now, product means multiplication. I multiply the, the, the constants, the coefficients, the numbers out front, the numbers with numbers, the variable with variables. So that means x's with x's, y's with y's. So for this one right here, as I do it's negative eight times negative three is 24. X squared times x to the first. So when I'm multiplying those, I add the exponent. And then y times y to the third. Again, I add the exponent, it's y to the fourth. Okay, multiply this. Again, same variable, add the exponent. So this is just gonna give me m to the fourth. Okay, uh, you might need some help in this one, but you know what, I, I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on this one. So, because uh, I gotta multiply the 32 times 3 fourths. So don't be afraid to break out the calculator because if you mess up a basic, you're gonna be so mad at yourself times uh, my three over four, there we go, 24. So my coefficient, the numbers out front, is gonna be 24, and then x, remember, you add the exponent, x times x, so it's three and four is gonna be x to the seventh. I, I, I don't like working with the block, I don't know why. All right, so now this one right here is a division. I, I just divide the numbers. So the other one was a multiplication. I multiply. This side I divide. Eight divided by four. It, it's very, it, it is just that easy. Uh, sorry about that. Our uh, case, okay, uh, I was eight divided by four, which we just get two. Now, when we were doing this previously, so this is going to be 2. Now, if I was multiplying my variables, I would add the exponents. So the opposite is going to happen here. So if I'm dividing my variables, I'm going to subtract my exponent. So now it's going to look like this. So it's going to be n. So it's going to be top minus the bottom, always. So it's going to be 2 minus 3. So that's one way of setting it up, and it's actually it will help you out. Okay, so two minus three, so it's gonna give me two n to the negative one. And then we do not like negative exponents. And so if it's negative up here, this is all over one, it's implied. So it's gonna be positive if I move this down to the bottom of this. So it's gonna be two to the n to the first, the positive one. So going across the divisor, it changes your sign. So if it's negative on top, it's gonna to be a positive exponent on the bottom. So this is what we get. All right, uh, this one right here, same thing, but this one, it, it's, it's gonna be two of them together. So A's with A's, B's with B's. So A is my exponent, so it's gonna be one minus negative two, always minus, but I'm starting with the negative here. So, and then it's B to the two minus four, so that's gonna give me a to the negative negative makes it a positive three and b to the negative two. Two minus four is negative two. I'm gonna move the negative down. So it's gonna be a to the third b squared. All right, with the division right here, um, 12 over 18, you can reduce the fraction here. Let's see, so um, so 12 over 18, so 2 over 3, so I'm going to get 2 on top, 
3 on bottom. Okay, so now it's going to be x to the third minus 1, right? Okay, because the, there's a 1 right here, there's a 1 implied. It's not there, just implied that it's there. If there's an x there, then there, there's a the 1 there. It's implied. So they don't write it, but it's just there. Then it's going to be y to the 5 minus 3. Okay, same thing. So let's take a look at what we're going to have. So right here, 2 x 3 minus 1 is 2 and then y to the 5 minus 3 is 2 and all that the only thing left on bottom is going to be a 3 I don't have any neg negative exponents to move down so that is going to be my answer multiply and divide so now one of my favorite methods right here is the fail first across inner and last so if I did this correctly, I can make this nice little smiley face out of it. So right here, uh, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. That's my first. And then all the way across, it's going to be a positive and a negative makes a negative 2xy. And then next one's going to be inner. So positive, positive. So it's going to be plus 2xy. And then my last two, which is right here. So a positive and a negative is a negative y squared. So if I did this correctly, let me see. Got a little face right here. Uh, right. Uh, let's see. A little, make this little emo kid right there. There we go. All right. So I did it correctly. I got a happy little face out of it. So in the middle, all this right here. So I have a negative 2xy and a positive 2xy. Those are going to cancel out. So I'm going to be left with 4x squared minus y squared as my final answer. All right, so this one's going to be a distribution because I can't do the fail thing. This one is a trinomial, so I have a trinomial on this side, and I have a binomial on this side right here. So I'm going to start multiplying first with first. So start here, that's going to be m to the third, and positive negative makes it a minus m squared p, and then the next one is right here, it's going to be positive positive, so it's plus m p squared. Try and put it in alphabetical order all the time, and it, it'll make your life a whole lot easier. And so now the next one, I'm going to actually do the bottom. I'm going to go under on this one. So now I did all the M's, so let's do the P's. So right here, this is going to be, multiply those, so it's going to be M squared. So let's see, that's going to end up right over here. It's going to line up with my second term right in here. So M squared P. So positive, positive, it's a plus sign right there, right? It's positive, so it lines up perfectly with that one. So let's do the next one. Let's see what we get right here. So positive negative is going to be a negative. So it's a minus m p squared. Ooh, that's nice. All right, keep going all the way over here. There's my last one I'm going to do, and that's going to be p. So it's a positive positive. So it's p to the third plus p to the third. And if you notice, it makes this nice little lineup where all my stuff lines up in columns. So I could add them together. I could combine like terms. So now I have a m to the third because I'm not adding anything to it. Now this is a positive right here. So I have a negative m squared p and I have a positive n squared p. That's going to go away. So that's going to become zero. That cancels out. Again, for this next one, I have a positive m p squared, a negative m p squared. Those cancel out. And then I have my plus p to the third. So my answer is going to be m to the third plus p to the third. There we go. All right, let's do it again. All right, so start with my first. So 4 times 16, I believe that one should be like 64. So positive, positive, so it's going to be 64, and it's going to be C 
to the third. All right, next one is going to be over here. So that's gonna be a positive positive. So four and four is plus 16 C, D. Okay, now the next one is going to be over here. So four, positive, positive. So it's gonna give me a four plus four because there's a one implied in front of the D squared right here. There's a one implied of that. So it's four times one. So it's just giving me the four. So it's gonna be C, D squared. Now let's go under. Now I have a negative D. So negative times a positive is gonna give me a negative. So if I did this correctly, it's gonna line up going the same way like I did that last time. So negative C squared D. Did I, did I miss one? No, I didn't, did I? Third, nope, yep. So this one's not gonna line up very well. Dang it, I tried so hard. But in the end, it doesn't really matter. So anyway, so let's add it. So it's gonna be a plus, so minus 16 C squared D. And this is gonna be a minus four D squared. And my last one is gonna be a minus plus, it's a negative D cubed. All right, so now I'm gonna have to go through and combine like terms where they are there. So any C thirds. So let's see, C to the third. So it's gonna be 64 C to the third. That's my only one, so I'm done with that one. So that one's done, so. Okay, so now let's go, what's a, do I have any C squareds? Oh yes, I do, I only have one right here. So I have a minus 16 C squared D. So I have this one right here and that one's now gone. Okay. Um, yep, okay, so the next one is going to be Let's see, that's gonna be CD, this one right here. All right, so it's gonna be plus, I only have one, I don't have anything to combine with that one. Okay, so plus uh, 16CD, that's gone. I uh, have the other C right here. So plus 4CD squared. Okay, that's gone. Uh, right here, minus four D squared. And my last one right here is minus D to the third. So this one is a pain. So just make sure you go through and identify each piece, combine it with any like terms that you have. There is no like terms, so we just went and organized it as needed. All right, so multiply and divide. So, ooh, this one's a good one. All right, so two divided, there's that one that we said that is implied in front of that. So two divided by one is gonna give me two. And then again, my x to the four minus one. There's a one implied on that one. It's not there, but it is there. So it's gonna be two x to the third, and that is my final answer. Okay, so negative six divided by two, that's gonna give me a negative three. Then I have my y to the five minus three. So my negative three, y to the five minus three is two. And there we go. Uh, we're really cooking now. So this one was 49, so let's go ahead and keep track of that too. So we're at 50, we're getting close. Now, uh, divide each one, so simplify the result. So we can break this up. So whenever we have under a, a common, so we have just one number, so this is a monomial, one term in the denominator, I could break up this. So this only works with the denominator, doesn't work with the numerator, only works with the denominator. So I could break this up into three 
x cubed over 2x squared plus sign because that's the plus sign right there 2x squared over 2x squared so basically at one point these were two fractions that had common denominators that we went through and you know combined over one denominator so now I could actually do the math so it's gonna be 3 over 2 you know that doesn't actually even reduce or anything so I still left with 3 over 2 so 3 over 2 then I do x to the 3 minus 2 same as I had before plus sign 2 divided by 2 is 1 and then x 2 minus 2 okay so I'll, I'll, I'll get to that here in a second so it's gonna be 3 over 2 x to the first okay 3 minus 2 is just 1 and now right here this is gonna give me x to the 0 x to the 0 power is just gonna be 1 so all this right here so top and bottom since they're the same numerator and denominator that's gonna reduce and cancel out and just give me 1 so my answer is gonna be 3 over 2 x to the first plus 1 Find complementary and supplementary of an angle. So complementary means 90, supplementary means 180. So complement of 57. So that means what number plus 57 is going to give me 90? So basically I'm going to do 90 minus 57, which is going to give me 33 degrees. So 33 plus 57 should add up to 90. There's my complement. Now my supplement is going to be 180 minus 57. Uh, off the top of my head, one ah, 180 minus 57, 123. I'm going to have 123 degrees for the supplement. Classify the angle. Uh, measure using terms right, straight, acute, obtuse. Okay, right is a 90, straight angle is 180, acute is uh, less than 90, obtuse is greater than 90. Okay, so let's take a look. 38, less than 90, so that's acute. I don't know, I just always think of it as something like small, and you're like, oh, that's cute. Or you're looking at that little puppy right there, it's a little small thing, and you're like, oh, it's a cute. Oh, yeah, so that's the lamest of the jokes, but it always works. All right, so now, same rules that we had on the previous one. Okay, acute is less than 90, obtuse is more than 90. This is more than 90, so therefore this is gonna be obtuse. I don't have a joke for this one. Sorry. <sighs> okay, this one right here, 90. So therefore, you know what? Under the, so is 90, straight is 180. This is less than 90. This is greater than 90. So it is, the right answer is right. One eighty. Okay, so by process of elimination, it has to be straight. Anyway, I previously wrote it 90, 180, less than 90, more than 90. So straight. Find the following areas. So this is a parallelogram. And with this parallelogram, it's always just going to be area is base times height. And the height has to be straight up and down. So it's going to be uh, 8.9 times 3.0. So 8.9 times 3.0. There we go, 26.7. What are my units? Centimeters, because they're all centimeters. And area is always square. So if you're not actually writing area 
as square. You cannot get full points on that. I'm sorry, um, because this is a linear. It has no depth. Where area, it actually, it's a surface. It, it has a square units. It means I have little squares that are each centimeter. So it means that there's 26.7 of these little centimeters in here. So that's what it means. So it's a one centimeter by one centimeter and it's gonna fill up this whole thing right here. So that's what that means. So your units are gonna be in squares. All right, following area. So this is a triangle. So area is equal to one half base times height. So my area, one half, my base is 10 times my height is six. So hopefully you don't need the calculator for this, but if you do, it's fine. 10 times six is 60, half of 60 is 30. Area is 30, my units here are centimeters, area is always square. So if you need the calculator, go ahead and use the calculator. <coughs> Okay. All right, this is a trapezoid. Area equals one half uh, height B1 plus B2. All right, my height is always gonna be straight up and down, always. This is my base one, so it's actually one of the parallel sides, and this is gonna be my B2. The other, the bottom of this, so think of it like that. So it's the top and the bottom. I don't want to ever use these pieces on the side. I don't. These are going to mess you up. Those are the diagonals. So if you have to use it, you're going to have to use like a Pythagorean theorem or something to be able to find the length of that. But you would need more information than what we have on this one. All right. So for this one right here, my area is equal to. You should have all these formulas on your reference sheet. If you don't, I'm sorry, that's your own fault. So you, you're allowed to actually take in, I believe it's uh, at least two pages, I gotta double check, it might be three, uh, two pages of notes front and back for this. So you, you know what I put up the reference sheet earlier, uh, where'd my reference sheet go? Here it is. Uh, I had the reference sheet. So I have my reference sheet. This is one actually I posted, it's in Blackboard, it's all there. Okay, so. To find this. There we go. All right, so let's see. Here's all the areas that you need for this. So it has some volumes, areas, parallelogram, rhombus, trapezoids. So it's all there. So it, I, I try to make it as easy as possible. It's it's a reference sheet. It has everything for the whole book, basically. So you could use this to actually go through and actually find everything you need. So let me go back to where I'm at. I am here. All right. So uh, my B1 in this case is going to be 9 plus 13. Let's go to the calculator. So math, like my fraction, 1 over 2 and my times my 4 times my 9 plus 13, close. So double check, make sure you're always double checking. So, cause sometimes your calculator is not gonna look like what it should look like as you're entering. So it's gonna be 44. My area is gonna be 44 centimeters squared. All right, on this problem right here, following the following perimeter. Ooh, snap. I, my slide did not come with units. All right, so let's see here real quick. Uh, all right, okay, so I found it. Um, here's what yours looks like right here. So we're on 59, so it's gonna be five. So this is actually gonna be a square. So bring this back up. Uh, so I'm gonna add my units in here. This is five. Uh, centimeters, five 
centimeters. So if this is square, that means that this is five centimeters and this is also five centimeters. So now perimeter means is actually all the linear distance around. So it's gonna be, so think of it like this as I'm like putting border or a fence. So five, 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 and five, going from there all the way around. So it's actually four times five. So my perimeter is a linear distance. So it doesn't have any depth. So perimeter is gonna be equal to four times five is 20 centimeters. If you notice, there's not a square here. So it's not, it's a linear distance. All right, so now find the following perimeter. So I need to find like little things. So I'm gonna kind of break this up so you can actually see this right here. So if it's 15 all from here to here, but from here to here is five, so that means from here to here, so this and this together has to add up to 15. This piece is five, so my missing piece right here should be 10. So I gotta do the same thing going the other way because I gotta find that other side over here. So if this whole thing right here is 23, that's 23, from here to here is seven, that means that this missing piece right here so seven plus something has to add up to 23. Uh, do a little math and I should come up with 16 for this right here. And for asking for perimeter, I gotta have all the sides. Gotta have all the pieces. So for my perimeter in this one, so it's gonna be P is equal to 15 plus seven plus 10 plus 16 plus five plus 23. 15 plus 7 plus 10 plus 16 plus 5 plus 23. So it's going to be 76, and my units on this one are going to be feet. Again, perimeter is a linear, so that doesn't have any depth. Find the area of a sector. Okay, uh, with the central angle of 50 degrees in a circle with the radius of 12. So I'm gonna put in a 12 right here, and that's inches. Now, so think of it like this. So area of a sector. So I'm only gonna find this piece in here. So if you guys can understand that. So think of it as just that slice of the pie. So I'm only gonna find that one right there. So I know that the whole circle going all the way around is supposed to add up to 360. So for my area, it's gonna be out of 360. So the fraction that I'm dealing with is gonna be my 50. So I'm only gonna have 50 out of the 360, and that's the piece that I'm looking for. I'm looking for the 50 out of the 360. So my normal area formula, area is equal to pi r squared, but now on this one, I only want a fraction of it. So that's how I do my theta out of 360 or my angle out of 360. And then it's gonna be times pi. And my radius on this one is gonna be 12. I'm gonna square that. So 50 over 360 and pi 12 squared. So 50 out of 360. Uh, my pi button, I, my pi button's right here. It's in blue. I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. So it's going to be, uh, to get a blue button, you have to hit right here. There we go. Pi, and then my 12, close it and square it right there. So make sure that does match what it's supposed to be. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So right here, I'm going to come up with uh, 62.83, it says round your answer to the hundredth. That's a different one from what we were doing. Hundredth is gonna be, so 10th hundredth. So my hundredth is a three. So look at the number on the right hand side is gonna be a one. The one's not enough to change that. So it's gonna be 62.83. My area is about 62.83, wow. I said it and I still wrote it wrong. My units on this one is gonna be in inches and it's gonna be area, so it's gonna be square. All 
All right, so this right here, find the arc length. I've added the arc length formula here for you. So in degrees, so you could actually do the same thing. So the arc length S is uh, pi times diameter, basically, um, for the arc length. Now, but we only want a fraction of it. We, won't, we don't want the whole circumference around the outside. I only want a small piece. So S is what I'm looking for here. So 60 is gonna be my theta, and the radius of the circle is 30 millimeters. So S equals theta is 60 degrees out of 360, okay, times two pi, and my radius is 30, there we go. So you, can, you don't have to write it with all the parentheses, it still works out the same thing. So if I write it the same way, 60 out of 360, and that's going to be times 2 times pi times 30. You get the exact same thing. So again, with my fraction, so 60, 360, and I go times 2 times my pi button times my 30. And for this one, what am I rounding to on this one? If the radius is this, find the length of the sector. Oh, it doesn't say. So let's round to the 10th on this one. Let's round to the 10th. So bring that back up. So uh, 10th is gonna be the four. The one doesn't make that four go up. So let's take a look and it's gonna be uh, 31.4. So S was the abbreviation for arc length, 31.4. My units are going to be in milli millimeters. And since the S, the arc length is basically a circumference, circumference is the distance around the outside that is a linear distance. So it doesn't have any depth, it's not squared. Find the volume of sphere, the radius of five. So this is gonna be a five right here, CM. So the volume of a sphere, let's go back to that reference sheet. Ooh, I pulled it over to the wrong side. Uh, so that reference sheet right here, uh, sphere, four thirds pi r cubed, if you could see that right there, right here on the bottom. 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, this one is cubic. So instead of having little squares that you're building inside of it, you're making little cubes. So think of it as a, like you're piling up a bunch of little dice inside there. So let's see. So volume is equal to 4 over 3 pi and is 5. to the third. Four thirds pi, and then my five, carrot third, right there. Make sure it's the way it's supposed to be. Four thirds pi r cubed, all right. There we go, and what are we rounding to? It doesn't say, I'm gonna round to the 10th, because I like the 10th, why not? Okay, so now this is gonna be the 10th, the five is the, is the 10th place, but the nine next to it is gonna make that five go up, so it's gonna be 523.6. So volume is about 523, getting tired, all right, two, And my units here are centimeters cubed because their little volume is always cubed, area is always squared, and a linear distance has no exponent over the units. It just would be just centimeters. What is the volume of a pyramid that has a square base of 48 meters on a side? So square, that means a square has all sides the same. So this is 48 
This is also 48. The back side's 48 and that side's 48. So now this is a pyramid. Okay, so a pyramid. So let's take a look at what my reference sheet says about pyramid. Uh, let me see, pyramid, there it is. One third capital B times H. So it's right here. So it's right there. Capital B times H. Now, the, what I say about the capital B, that means capital B implies that that's the area of the base. The area of the base. So the base is a square. So that means that to find the area of a square, it's going to be length times width. So my volume formula is one third. Now it's going to be 48 times 48. 48 times 48. That's my capital B. This is what this is. And then my height is going to be how tall is this one right here on a side and it has a height of 100 meters okay 100 so it's a very tall pyramid so it should look like that so the capital b is this piece in here so i'm finding the area of that and then just multiply it in so just have your calculator do it all so one third 48 times 48 and then times 100 there we go got everything where it goes uh, 76800 volume is 76800 my units on here are going to be in meters and then this is a volumes volume is always cubed I'm going to put a little cubic right there How many cubic inches are in an aluminum can with a two and one half inch diameter? So that means that all the way across is two one half inches and a four and three quarter inch height. Four three quarter. So that means from here to here. Okay, so this is a cylinder. It is a cylinder, even though it's a can, it, it's a cylinder. That's the shape it is. So the volume of a cylinder is going to be pi r squared h. So h is my height, my radius is half the diameter. It's always gonna be half the diameter. It always is. So now, if you don't know how to actually figure out what's half of two and a half, eh, I'll show you. It's actually not bad. So let, let's start with that piece right there. So two and a half. So isn't that basically just saying half is 0.5, right? So you, you should know your decimals. So it's gonna be, uh, let me see. So 2.5 divided by two right there, 1.25. Okay, that helps me out. So volume is pi, my radius is 1.25 squared times my height, which was four and three over four. There we go, there we go. All right, so my calculator will just do it all for me. So start off with the pi, and then I have my uh, parentheses, 1.25, close, and that is a square. Ooh, nope, wrong one. And change that to a square there we go and then open that up and then I have my four and three four so I'm gonna go and I have my special fraction button right there there's my four and three over four there we go so it should look just like that so that's what I wrote out go ahead calculate that and it says round to the nearest tenth. I like the tenth. So right here, the three is in the tenths place. The one's not big enough to make it move. So it's gonna be 23.3. Volume is about 23.3. And my units are all in inches. And since this is volume, it is cubed. So if, and if you're questioning about my about symbol here, 
every time I round something, I need to change it because it's no longer exactly, it's going to be about. It means that's that I rounded that at some point. 66. Okay, now this right here. Uh, birth rates per 1,000 females age 15 to 19 are in the table. Okay, there it is. All right, this data also graphed in the figure below provide a title, labeled, axes, complete legend, as if you were preparing this for public display. Okay. So, let's start off with, <clears throat> uh, let's figure out who belongs to what. So, we have average, whites, black, Hispanic. So let, let's start with the very bottom one right here. So which one is starting out in the year 1990 at about 40? 1990, oh, so that means that this dotted line on the bottom, that's the one I'm looking for right there. So that one's gonna be white. So follow that over, do, 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 do. that's right here. So the one that matches that, there we go. The next one. Uh, this one right here is about 60. It's that blue line right in there. So 60, who's about 60? Okay, that's, that's average. So that's average, so the blue line is average. Average, okay, I got that. Next one, this yellow thing right here. Hey, that's just an ugly yellow. All right, so the yellow thing is about 100. Okay, Hispanic. Okay, let's fill that out. So that means this one's right here. These are just ugly colors. So. Anyway, and so last but not least, uh, 116 is this one right here, right? There we go. So yeah, so let's go through here. Okay, so now, let, let's, let's label these. So now down here, it's quite obvious, but you're going to actually say what that represents. So from here to here on the very bottom of this, these are my years. These are the years. And then right here, let's see. It says the birth rates per thousand females age 15. Okay. So let's see. This means that this is my, the birth rate. Okay, so now this is how many per thousand? This is, uh, going this way, this is number. It's not hashtag, it's pound sign. But it is number out of every thousand. So I, don't, I can't really fit it in here because I kind of modified it just to fit my screen right here. So number out of every thousand. Okay, so now I have my axes labeled. I have this prepared. Okay, and so let's let's give this thing a name. This is birth rates. By race. Okay, there we go. Birth rates by race. Okay, so I, I have everything labeled. Okay, I have the legend. I have my my up and down. I have my left and right. I have my title of my graph. Um, okay, so now, let me see. Let's see. I got a title. Label the axis. I have bottom and the left. Complete the legend as if you're preparing. Okay, there we go. Plus preparing this for public display, my... Uh, Actually, I am doing it for public because this is going on YouTube. Anyway, I'd probably try and use better penmanship though. All right, which show, which race showed the smallest decrease from 1990 to 2012? The smallest decrease. If you notice, all of them are decreasing. So all of them are decreasing. So think of it like this. So if if I'm looking at it, I want to see like the smallest decrease. So I'm just and like the big differences from right here. So if I'm looking at here, in 1990, that was uh, 116.2. But now here, in 2012, this is 43.9. So that's a change of like 70 almost. So that's a huge decrease, okay? So let's look at this. Here's 100 for Hispanic, 
and then it's 46. That's like, uh, what's that, like 55, 54? That, that's changing 54. That's pretty big. Okay, that's 54. So now here's 42, and here's 20. That's a change of 20. Uh, 20, uh, something like that. So 22.5, So or just 22, sorry. So that's gonna be a change of 20. So if I look at the differences in each one from here to here, the changes, and they're all decreasing right here. So the smallest decrease right here is for the race. It, uh, these are gonna be whites. So, now please make sure you actually fill all these out. Uh, last semester when I was grading these, most people eat, just forgot to even fill in the bottom question. So, all right, there we go. We are done. Okay, so if it helps you out, don't forget, at least give me a like. Uh, you're probably done with math, so you probably don't want to subscribe. So, all right. Thank you very much.